do a short video while I'm crafting <coughs> any quality. Sorry about my voice. Uh, and it's simple. It's pretty simple stuff. It's basically just like crafting a line. There's just a few extra things you have to remember when you start crafting any quality. Because they are any quality, how they look on the graph is going to be different. When the graph gives you information, it's just for looking at crafting a line. So it's just one line. But any quality is going to have more answers. Right? If you say, like for example, y is greater than or equal to 2, there's way more answers than if y was just equal to 2. If y is just equal to 2, the only answer is 2. But if y is greater than or equal to 2, then any number bigger than 2 is an answer. And that's an infinite amount. So we have to represent that differently on the graph. Um, the first three I don't know, I only remember. Okay, there's four symbols, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or less than. And depending on uh, the symbol, there's going to be different kind of lines. We have two different lines. One line is going to represent <coughs> if it's or equal to. And the other line will represent if it's just greater than or less than. When we draw a line that is or equal to, we draw the line as a solid line. But if it's greater than and less than, if it's not equal to, then the line is going to be drawn as a dotted line. That way when you know when you're looking at the graph, okay, our answers have to be bigger than this line, but they can't be on the line. So as an example, let's graph y is greater than or equal to 2. So we know that when we graph this, we're going to have a solid line. Well, if we want to represent all the places where y is greater than 2, we're going to, we can think of kind of putting points on the graph. So if I plot that point, this green point right here, that point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the negative, 5 on the x, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 on the y. Well, this point has two variables, x and y, but we only care about the y because we're only concerned with places where y is bigger than 2. Well, this point is clearly in a spot where my y value is bigger than 2, 7 is bigger than 2, so that point would work. Well, if I graph the point right here, that would be negative 2 for the x and 5 for the y. Again, 5 is bigger than 2, so this point would be in a position that would fulfill this requirement. So let's start by placing <coughs> our line, kind of a barrier between parts of the graph where y is going to be 2 and then bigger than 2. So let's start with just graphing y equals 2. We're just going to graph y equals 2. Because at this point, that's kind of our, my barrier point. So y equals 2 would be this line right here. Right? That's y equals 2. If you notice how I drew a solid line, because if I look back at my inequality, it has to be solid. Well, I don't want just points that are on this line. That would be great if it was y equals 2, but my original problem is y is greater than or equal to 2. So I have to represent the fact that this point works, and this point works, and any point up here works. So a pretty simple solution that uh, we come up with is You just shade in the spots where y is bigger than 2. So I would just shade in 
all the part of the graph and with your pencil you would just shade that in. It doesn't have to be good, you just kind of have to be fill in that spot. So this is saying, okay, here's my line. Everything on that line and above are points that fulfill y is greater than or equal to b. So that's our graph and inequality. Let's graph an inequality where we have x and a y. So here is an equation where y is greater than or equal to 3x minus 2. First step. <coughs> and maybe if I can, I want to write this down too. Step one. So we're just going to graph, <coughs> excuse me, we're just going to graph y equals 3x minus 2. That's all we're going to graph. So graph this line, my y-intercept is negative 2. My slope is 3, so 1, 2, 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3 over 1, 3 over 1. So I'm just graphing my line. And then I'm going to create a straight line that goes through that. I saw this one. Okay, so that's good. my line. Now I want to find out, okay, what side of this line do I need to shade? Oh, forgot one thing. It's a solid line because it's or equals. Okay, if it was just greater than or less than, I would need to make this line dotted, but it's or equals to, so it's solid. Next, we got to figure out what side I have to shade. Well, we don't always just want to go with, okay, if y, y has to be bigger than 2, or y has to be bigger than, so I'm not just going to graph the top or the bottom. That doesn't always work. So the second step, oops, the second step then, write this down. Step 2. Test the point. So we're going to test a point, meaning I am going to pick a point, say this point, well, I don't want to choose that point, there's a special reason. I'm going to pick a test point, but I want to pick a test point that's really easy. And if you can manage it, uh, the easiest test point might be 0, 0. Plugging in 0 is pretty easy. I can easily tell that 0, 0 is on a distinct part of the line. So I'm going to test the point 0, 0. So in my, sorry, in my inequality, I'm going to just plug in 0 for x and 0 for y. So 0 is greater than or equal to 3 times 0, which is 0 minus 2. Simplify 0 is greater than or equal to 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. This, okay, is true. Because it's true, I will shade the side of the line where that point is on. Maybe you already figured that out. Like I shade all of the graph that that point is on. Therefore, every point over here, if I were to plug it into my inequality, would make the inequality true. Let's try one more example. <coughs> X is less than negative 1. Step 1. 
graph the line. So I'm going to graph x equals negative 1. So x equals negative 1 right here is where x equals negative 1. But before I draw it, I'm going to see that, okay, this is just less than, so my line actually has to be dotted. Okay, so I'm going to make a dotted line and x equals 1. Oh. Okay. <coughs> now I want to shave the side where x is smaller than negative 1, which obviously will be over here. So then I would shave, oops, I want to Highlight. Okay, then I'm going to shade all this side of the graph. And now I'm done. So that's how you would graph inequality. Bring it back to this lesson now.